Welcome back to another Micro Soldering Wednesday. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be going over an issue that isn't too common. But some of the skills that we're going to go over are very practical for working on all electronics, especially when there are motherboard issues. So let's get into the video. Today we're going to be looking at an older model. It's an iPhone 7 Plus and it has an issue with reading the fingerprint. And it's not an issue with the home button, the fingerprint sensor. It's an issue with something on the board. So let's go through troubleshooting that and fixing it. Here you can see the button isn't clicking and in order to get into the phone we have to use the assistive touch. When we go in to set up a fingerprint it'll allow us in and it actually is blue. When you go to add it it says unable to complete touch ID setup. Please go back and try again. We'll go ahead and turn the phone off. So now obviously this could be an issue with the home button. And it's pretty easy to assess whether or not it's that by just simply trying, by simply looking at the home button itself. It could be that it is something as simple as power isn't getting to the button. After opening the phone and taking out the brackets and screws, you can then take a, a closer look at the screen and see, okay, it is in fact not the screen, it's not the flex cables, it's definitely something with the board. And we can do that by using a multimeter, by testing the continuity between pins or even the resistance or the voltage to the pins. So here we, so here on the smaller of the two display connectors is where the home button is connected. And we can see that this open, that this line going back to U14, which is supposed to be an open line, it's supposed to provide three volts. And when you, Put it in continuity mode you're going to be getting something around 600 ohms and it, we're getting a near and what we're what we're finding with the multimeter is near a short it's not fully shorted but there's an issue where it's definitely not reading that and when we go and check the voltage testing with 2.7 volts here we don't get the proper voltage reading so it's definitely an issue now the the reason we're not getting that voltage from the P, from the power management IC or the PMIC. It could be something as simple as the filter. I'm gonna open up JC Drawing. You can also use ZXW. And let's take a look at this circuit. All right, so as you can see right here, these three pins, they are connected. And they travel through these capacitors, through this filter. This filter jumps through. This filter is tied with these capacitors and it jumps all the way to the back side of the board through one more capacitor straight to the PMIC, which is which has an open line. You can see this is the a three volts line. Given that we don't have three volts coming from the PMIC, means that either the PMIC itself is bad or something as simple as this filter is bad. Now just testing across it with the multimeter you'll know that if it you'll know if it's working or not because it'll either have continuity or it won't. And typically when they're broken there'll be a physical hole in it so it's really easy to assess that. So looking at this a little bit further it's easy to conclude that the issue is in fact a break between the PMIC and the logic board itself, either a, a, a cold joint or the actual PMIC itself has gone bad and is no longer able to output the three volts to those pins so that we can get power to the touch ID or the fingerprint sensor for it to even work. So we're just not getting power. So next we'll take out the logic board so we can actually work on it because you don't want to work on another board while it's inside of the phone. The PMIC is on the back of the board, we have to get there anyway. We'll carefully peel up the sticker that's protecting the PMIC area. And one of the things that you'll note with almost every single PMIC is they have underfill and they're typically surrounded by a variety of components that are butted up against them really close so in order to work on them, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to really 
we're gonna have to really focus on what we're doing. And in this case, because the CPU is directly behind the PMIC, what we're going to do is remove the shield that it acts as a heat sink. And we're going to allow the clamping fixture that we're gonna put this in to be a better heat sink to better help dissipate the heat that we're gonna to introduce to the back of the board so that we don't overheat the CPU. Because if you overheat the CPU, then the, then you'll have to do a whole CPU reball, and that is definitely not worth it on a 7 Plus, and it's not fun either. But doing a PMIC, it's much more doable. So using a number 11 blade, we're going to carefully go around the perimeter of the PMIC and scrape the underfill. This can be done with about 250, 260 degrees Celsius on your rework station with a moderate airflow. You'll have to figure out what your station does in order to do this, but we don't want to get anything up to soldering temperatures because we don't want to do any damage to anything that's surrounding or on the other side of the board. So once we've gone around and carefully gotten down to the board, removing all of the underfill, we'll be then be able to take a pry tool with our temperature now increased and we'll be able to pop it out. So we're gonna take our temperature up to 430 degrees Celsius with a pry tool. And once it's up to temperature, it will just pop right off. We're gonna add some low melt solder with some flux and our iron to go around and help mix with the factory solder so that it is much easier to wick and clean off the pads. And one thing to note with these older logic boards or really any logic board, it's really easy to scrape away the top surface layer uh, between connecting pads. And so you can see there's going to be a, a few rows where the pads are almost conjoined in a way. And typically that's okay, you can get away with it especially on an IC that's this contained where it doesn't have a whole lot of chance to move around. So you won't have any bridging. So using a soldering iron and some wick, flux will be able to go around and really suck up all of the factory solder or any solder that we put down. And we'll be able to go around the border and remove any of the underfill that will potentially cause the chip not to want to sit flat when it comes time to solder it back on. So carefully going around there with tweezers or a knife, we'll be able to carefully scrape, like we're doing here, all of the underfill that could potentially cause us to have an unevenness when we go to solder on a new PMIC. It's definitely important to take your time in this step. That way you won't be wasting your time with a device that is this old where you can quickly and efficiently replace the component that needs to be replaced. Really taking our time to go over it with some wick, making sure it's nice, clean, that there's no high points, that there's no underfill. We'll add a little bit of flux, come in with a little bit of heat and spread that around so we have a nice thin coating of flux so that when we go to solder the PMIC on, we don't have any cold joints. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we have the orientation of the chip correct. There is a dot in the corner and you need to make sure that that is in the proper corner. So if you haven't made note of that at the beginning, you can reference the schematic and you'll be able to find that out. We'll go ahead and install the chip at 400 degrees Celsius. And what you want to look for is you, you'll see the chip settle. And as you see it drop, you'll be able to nudge it. And if it snaps back into place, you know you're good so you can let it cool down. Now all we have to do is reinstall it into the frame. And that way we can test it to see if it works by reconnecting everything, especially the display with the home button connector. And that way we can turn it on, test it, and see if we have now have power running to those pins that was preventing us from getting a readout on the fingerprint scanner in the first place. So once it's fully booted up, you can actually see that the double click works. It's actually letting us try to get into the phone now. And when we go to set up a fingerprint, when we go to have it scan, it actually starts to scan. And that is because the PMIC now is not faulty and is giving power to the home button itself. And that's how this particular case, which was rare, was fixed. And you can see here how the application can be used across many other devices. 
Maybe it's not an issue with the fingerprint sensor. Maybe it's an issue with something else, but by testing the pins on the connectors, you'll be able to find whether or not it matches what a schematic or what a schematic tells you it should. If you're not getting roughly the value that it's supposed to be, that it's supposed to be, if you're not, if you're not getting the value that it's supposed to be outputting or the continuity that it should be showing, then you can troubleshoot it from there by tracing it back to the source or the cause of the issue. If it was a full short on this line, chances are it would have been one of the capacitors. And that would be easy to isolate using a power supply and something like a thermal camera. If it was the fuse, it would have been easy to isolate because it's easy to notice visually when a filter is bad because there's typically a hole through it, especially on one of these older models, or simply testing across it with a multimeter, you'd be able to determine there is no continuity and therefore this filter is no longer functioning. Let's replace that and we are good to go. You can even just troubleshoot it by soldering a wire from one side of the filter to the other just to test and see if now do we have the right readout. If you do, then go ahead and replace the filter so that you still have that protection in place instead of just running a wire, which you could technically do and get away with because it would fix the issue, having that solid connection across the filter with a physical wire. But for the longevity of the device, replace the filter if that was the case. And this type of diagnosing and repair can be applied all over the place. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for another Tips and Tricks Thursday.